All right, hey everybody, we're back. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the Tundra, but if you don't know, they are doing crate motors for all of these 100,000 uh, Tundras and Lexus LX uh, 600s are getting new crate motors. That is a beautiful thing. We are super excited about that. And that is a huge, huge step for Toyota and a huge step in the right direction and a huge step for customer satisfaction, customer care, customer support. They are doing very well. However, we do got some questions that you guys have addressed in the comments and we wanna put that out there. We want information still. We need more than this, okay? We got to, so I put together a little list based on, again, your comments that you guys have been mentioning in here and then uh, one of my own little gripes, but we've put this stuff in here together so hopefully Toyota sees it and then we can also address it here and I want your comments on it. So when we look at this, what about the hybrids, okay? What, why is the hybrids not included in this? Now, we know it's not part of a safety recall, which the original recall is a actual, um, it, it is a safety recall for this, okay? We know that when we look at the recall right here, it is considered a safety recall, says so right here, and because the, um, the hybrid models do not, they can still continue on hybrid power even if the motor does go bad. Um, that's why the, this is for conventional gas motors only in these vehicles 2022s and 2023s uh, and they do give the date range somewhere it's not in here it's in the NHTSA thing um, up to 11 23 I think was a build date for these but why are the what makes the hybrids uh, engine wise if they fail what's going on with that how come they're not included in this what is the update on this when are we going to find out what's going to happen with the hybrids same goes for the um, why did uh, and, and then same goes for the um, the 2024 models, okay? Why are the 2024 uh, going down? Limited amount of them, but we still got 2024s that are going down. We see that here. We got them here on Reddit. We got here, this guy's 20, his went down with 20,000 miles on it. Done, motor gone. Uh, we got another one here. Where was he at? Uh, said right in here somewhere. Uh, good to hear. My son's 2024 Tundra just lost his engine due to the bearings on that one. Just went down. Okay, there's a few of them here. We got another one right here in Torque News, 7,000 miles. Miles. My brand new 2024 uh, Tundra just went down, needs a new motor. So we're seeing this kind of stuff happening um, with these 2024s. When are we going to find out what's going to happen so that these 2024 owners can sleep better at night? Why did the part numbers change? Okay, why did part numbers change if there was if it was debris? Ever, this whole thing keeps telling us time and time again that it was due to debris in the engine right here. There was a possibility certain amount of machining debris that may not have been cleaned or cleared out from the engine when it was produced. No, not many people are believing this. Okay, we're really not. Because if it was, then why are the hybrids not affected? What's going on with the 2024s? And why have you guys canceled bearing part numbers and put new ones in? Okay, we know. And again, I have all this documented in videos that we'll put at the end of this for you as thumbnails, or you can click on the videos and watch them for yourself. But we know that as of uh, uh, April 2024, bearing numbers have been repla replaced on uh, the number one and number four bearing, as well as some of the other things. So they made some changes to this, but they're still sticking with the fact that it's this issue is machining debris. Okay, that's what they're still claiming, yet they're changing part numbers. Uh, does that mean that any of the 2024s and the late model 2023s that were built before that, will they be covered with this new engine thing? What's going on with that? Where is our information that we're looking for for more of this? Now, it's great that, like I said, my hat is off to you, Toyota, for, for stepping up and doing crate motors on this and doing it the right way. But we need some more information. It took you an awful long time to get us this information to begin with and understand the logistics of it. But now that it's out, that's out and you already have the logistics going and you have these motors in transport and being sent to dealers, the first one of these repairs under this new, what they said here under this new right here, uh, uh, hang on. Uh, for all involved vehicles, Toyota and Lexus dealers will replace replace the engine with a new one at no cost to customers. These engine this replacement under this, which was just announced on July twenty fifth, um, is already getting done uh, like on August 1st. So like literally in a day or two, this is going to happen. And this first one of these new motors put in from this as a shipped crate motor from Toyota is going to happen. We know that. Um, if that's already here and that's already underway, where is our information on the rest of them? Okay, that's the 2022s and the 2023s that you got on recall. What is going to happen with the rest of these? 
what happened with the part number changes? What was the real cause of this? Where do these people that own them stand? Where's the engineer's videos covering all this, okay? Uh, when t uh, TFL, when their engine went down, um, that front diff went out, it was like three and a half months later before they were allowed to talk about what really happened and publish a video that they had with the engineer that explained that the um, ADD and the uh, differential cr uh, broke apart and it, uh, the uh, transmission and it, the diff, the front diff wasn't strong enough to handle that. They had to detune the motor to make it where it can handle that and it did this exceeding of pressure, whatever. Point being, it took months for Toyota to release that information to us. Why are we not hearing anything now about the real thing that's going on here? Why are we not knowing, uh, you know, the, the debris thing here? And if it is debris, why we're changing part numbers, why the hybrids aren't involved, why the 23 and 24s aren't, aren't in this, included in this? Will this expand? Where is the transparency? That's what it boils down to. Where is the transparency from Toyota? If Toyota wants to act like they are a or American company now with the way they're building their trucks, remember they want more tech. You know, Toyota used to be simple, affordable, reliable. Okay. Well, with all their new trucks, they've went the American way. Cheaper built, less quality, uh, more tech, more high tech, more power, um, which they've always been underpowered. They went, they went all the ways that American trucks have because they want to compete. And it's working for them. They're selling with their Tundra. They're selling them like crazy. So the concept is working. But if you're going to act like an American company when it comes to these trucks, you got to act like an American company and give us as Americans some information on it. Okay, we need more. This tight lip, don't tell nobody, do it when we want to, uh, pull the, you know, basically pee down your back and tell you it's raining stuff. We, we don't tolerate it very well. And the people in the comments on my videos, they want this information. They are your customers. They are your Tundra owners looking to have these questions answered. Where is the truth behind all of this? When can you tell us what's going to happen with these? Uh, and they also want to improve too. They, they're tired of the dealer scams. They are sick and tired of being overcharged. Uh, dealer markups, dealer added accessories, must have stuff. The things that dealer scams that are going on, they're fed up with it. Okay, that's something that needs to be taken care of. And in the custom ordering, bring it back. Give us it again. I know it's been many years since you did, but people don't want to have to pick what you get or buy an allocation. They want to be able to custom order things your way. These are very expensive trucks and you offer some really great packages. Let people pick them and order them the way they want. Okay, They don't want to have to get a TRD Pro um, from whatever ones the dealers have and drive thousands of miles away to go pick one up and then pay 10 grand over MSRP for let people order the stuff they want okay you know let them let them have this um, my biggest wish that Toyota would do too um, and actually we got a typo in here that we should I should have fixed but I was running all caps but this is for um, f the four by four engagement is but my biggest wish at Toyota if you're listening what you want need to do, you need, again, if you are going to compete with American trucks today, you have to solve this, okay? Because I don't know why the Japanese um, trucks do this. Nissan is the same way. But this four-wheel drive for Toyota, the four-wheel drive engagement to between four low and four high is the same as it was in the third gen and the second gen. It is brutal, exhausting, and it does not engage easy, and you got to rock back and forth and fight the truck to get it to do it. It is horrible where every American truck, you just touch the button, turn the knob, or in my Jeep, pull the lever, and it engages instantly. Same with your locker. And why can't we use a rear locker in 4 high? Every other company, American-made truck, that has a rear locker lets you use it in 4 high. You are the only one left that does not. You need to fix that and give it to us in 4 high. Um, and then also fix the locker engagement. Again, it's a lot of back and forth, rocking back and forth, messing around, forward, backward, forward, backwards, turn the wheels, do all this stuff, everything to get the locker to engage and disengage. Your locker in your four-wheel drive system is is the number one, absolute number one reason I sold my 2022 Tacoma and bought my Gladiator. It is your reason. If you had a four-wheel drive system that it went into four low easier, and even if you, and then if you gave me four a locker in four high and easy locker engagement, I'd probably still be in your Toyota Tacoma. I'm not because of that, and many people feel that way. So there's my gripe, my info. These are the questions that people are asking. Now you as an audience 
Anything we need to add to this? Anything else that you'd like to tell Toyota? Anything else you would like to know from them? Um, like I said, we're, this is not a bash on Toyota. We are not knocking Toyota. We are very happy and impressed with what Toyota has done. We like the direction they are going, and we are super excited that they stepped up to the game. But that you know that doesn't still mean that everything else is okay. We need more. So, you know, what are you thinking? What else do you want to know? Put it in here. Write it in the comments. The, everything on here, except for my biggest wish on the four-wheel drive, which drives me nuts. Remember, I'm in the woods 300 miles a week. This, this is a big problem for me. It's the reason I will never own another Toyota until you fix that four-wheel drive system and you fix that locker and give it to us in four high and fix the locker engagement. But everything else on here is based on you guys and audience and what you're saying. What do you want to see um, from Toyota? What is it you are looking for for information from them? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.